speak over here. Good evening, welcome to the Roundtable, and of course this is a special edition of the Roundtable. Today is World Day for Safety and Health at Work, and so we've gathered a panel of guests to discuss this matter tonight from various perspectives. Um, Spencer Amory is the Labor Commissioner. Uh, Mr. Lincoln Maynard, he's from the Manufacturing Division of the um, St. Kitts and Nevis Chamber of Industry and Commerce. Mr. Stanley Franks is here representing the St. Kitts and Nevis Trades and Labor Union and a Public Relations Manager from the Social Security, Mr. Chesel Hamilton, is here with us tonight as well. And tonight we're going to get in depth as to, you know, how um, the, the Labor Department, um, employer, employee, and insurer um, handles issues at work as it relates to health and safety. Um, before we get into the details, though, we're going to hear from the folks at Brimstone Hill, and we want to say a special thanks to them again for um, sponsoring the um, roundtable and even tonight our special edition. So we'll hear from Brimstone Hill. And we'll come back on the other side.
Welcome back to the roundtable. As mentioned earlier, this is a special edition of the um, roundtable for um, World Day of um, Safety and Health um, at Work. And of course, the ILO is one of the international affiliates um, who works with the Labor Department here in St. Kitts. And the Director General, uh, Mr. Guy Ryder, um, has sent his um, greetings to in um, celebration of this day. Well, I don't know. I guess we'll find out later if it's a celebration or not. But I'm going to hand over to uh, Mr. Um, Amri. The, of course, he's the Labor Commissioner. And he will um, go through uh, Mr. Ryder's speech um, for as it relates to, to safety and health at work. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Moderator, um, for this um, opportunity to present on behalf of the ILO the um, speech of the Director General, um, Mr. Guy Ryder, on this very important day, which is the World Day for Safety and Health at Work 2015. Um, the theme of this um, speech, um, the World Day for Safety and Health, is culture of prevention on occupational safety and health. The news is punctuated periodically by intense coverage of dramatic, heartbreaking stories that capture global attention. Health workers infected while caring for patients with deadly diseases, trapped minors who may or may not resurface, factory buildings collapsing, plane crashes, explosion of oil rigs, and nuclear accidents. While the media eventually moves on to other topics, working in hazardous conditions is actually a daily routine and unseen affair for many workers. The, number of strike, the numbers are striking. Over 313 million workers suffer non-fatal occupational injuries each year, huh. equating to 860,000 people injured on the job on a daily basis. Every single day, 6,400 6, people die from an occupational accident or disease, amounting to 2.3 million deaths each year. Work-related accidents or diseases can definitely be placed in the high burden category of all global health problems. Economic recession or pressure to maximize profits cannot justify cutting corners in workplace safety. Actually, failure to do so comes at a very high price. 4% of global gross domestic product, equivalent to an astounding US 2.8 trillion, is drained off annually by costs related to lost working time, interruptions in production, treatment of occupational injuries and diseases, rehabilitation, and compensation. A long-standing ILO priority, occupational safety and health, was recognized as a fundamental human right in the 208 Seoul Declaration on Safety and Health at Work. It is time, it is time to, to turn this human right into reality for workers everywhere. Good governance on occupational safety and health shows that prevention pays. Today, on the occasion of World Day for Safety and Health at Work, the ILO calls for urgent action to build a culture of prevention on occupational safety and health. What does a national culture of prevention on occupational health and safety involve? It involves respecting at all levels the right to a safe and healthy working environment, active participation of all stakeholders in securing a safe and healthy working environment through a system of defined rights, responsibilities, and duties, and according the highest priority to the principle of prevention. <coughs> How do we build and maintain such a culture of prevention? It must be founded on the engagement of many partners, governments, workers and employers, and the organizations, specialists and experts. Constructive dialogue amongst these groups promotes consensus building and democratic 
uh, involvement of those with a vital stake in the world of work. It is time to consolidate occupational safety and health achievements in prevention. Good practices should be shared, promoted, and emulated where possible, and partnership forged to accelerate progress towards building a global culture of prevention. Raising awareness and knowledge of occupational hazards and risk, and how to prevent and control them is key for this process. Good governance will strengthen country capacities and also facilitate mobilization of national and international resources. Spending these funds wisely require the creation and implementation of effective national occupational safety and health strategies with the aim of extending them to all sectors, including micro and small enterprises, the informal economy, and agriculture. Each and every one of us can contribute to the prevention of <coughs> occupational deaths, injuries, and diseases. I invite you to join the ILO's New Safe Day campaign, which we are launching to raise awareness, secure greater engagement of people, and support stakeholders. Together, we can build a culture of prevention and occupational health and safety. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Um, Amory. Some staggering numbers as it relates to, um, you know, health and safety and health at work. What does this mean for the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis? It is very important for the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis um, to um, subscribe um, to this culture of um, prevention of occupation, health and safety um, in the workplace and to develop that sort of culture. Um, certainly, as you are aware, the Department of Labor is the governmental arm um, agency mm -hmm. that has responsibility for the mandate of um, the occupational health and safety. And um, in that, we have a, a, le a legislative framework that governs that there, and it is it is informed by the um, Labor Act. It is also informed by the Accidents and Occupational um, Disease Notification um, Act, um, the notification of that there, the Fatal Accidents Act, and out of that there, within that legislative framework, um, the Labor Department has a cadre of labor inspectors whose responsibility mm -hmm. is to go into the workplace, to go into the workplace so that, and to inspect the workplace for social and labor, um, and labor issues. And so we are talking about um, the, the conditions of work, the hazards and risks that exist um, in the workplace. What are the social conditions um, that exist in the workplace that in any shape, form, or um, fashion is in non-compliance or contravenes um, some of the, the laws that have been constructed, the legislative um, infrastructure that has been constructed, not only in, um, locally, but internationally, uh, because we are a member of the ILO, um, to ensure that persons are working in a safe and healthy um, 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 environment. As, uh, as you heard in the, the speech here, it is a human right. Okay, I'm going to hold you off there for now, and we'll come back to that. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we do have representatives here on the worker side and on the employer side as well, too. I'm going to go now to uh, Mr. Maynard, Lincoln um, Maynard, um, as it relates to, well, in, in connection with the, the, the employer side. Now, listening to uh, Mr. Spencer, uh, Mr. Amory just now, <laughs> I'm sorry, He's pretty much saying that, you know, they have the right to go into your place and make sure that, you know, everything, people are working in a safe environment. Um, I mean... Yeah, well, I mean... Good, good evening, um, Clement. Um, employers, or responsible employers, mm -hmm. really look forward to that kind of action from agencies such as the, um, the Labor Department. Um, we as responsible employers take safety, occupational safety, very, very seriously. 
Um, of course, I can, I can speak directly for a plant like the brewery, but I also speak for the general membership of the, of the Chamber of Industry and Commerce, not only the manufacturers. Mm -hmm. It is true that I represent the manufacturers, the manufacturing division, but the other sectors, the trades and services where occupational safety is also an issue. Sometimes people believe that it is only in a plant such as the brewery or in a plant such as Cajolo or in a plant such as where they're doing skilled work mm -hmm. and they, where they're interacting with, with machinery that there are safety issues. But we know that wherever you are, even in your home, there could be safety issues right. if you are not aware of what is happening mm -hmm. in the environment. So we welcome that and we believe that it ought to be a little bit more robust in terms of visits because <laughs> then um, it, it helps with one of the things that employers have been trying to, to do in terms of the outlay of resources, that is awareness. Because when people are not aware of the dangers that confront them, it's very easy for them to get into silly accidents which could cost their lives. So we would want to continue to encourage that as, as employers. All right, thank you very much you. for the um, opening salvo. And now we're going to go to the workers' um, representative who plays a very important um, you know, role in the whole equation um, as well. And I guess, uh, Mr. Franks, you're going to explain to us how and why your role as the workers' representative is not usurped by the Ministry of um, Labor. Good evening and welcome to the roundtable. Thank you, moderator. Um, I must first of all say how it is important, how important it is mm -hmm. for the ILO to give recognition to the matter of occupational health and safety and has um, made this day, uh, put in place this day as um, a celebratory day to celebrate the culture of occupational health and safety at the workplace. Um, it, is, it is very important for us as workers' representatives to give recognition to that matter. And again, I say falling on the eve of Workers' Day, which is May the 4th, Monday mm -hmm. coming, when workers speak to the matter of workers' rights, mm -hmm. social issues, um, give recognition to the importance of the workforce that the issue of occupational health and safety must be paramount in, on, on this occasion. Um, Sinkits do not have a long history of occupational health and safety awareness coming from the background of the sugar industry where people were treated as slaves and there was no recognition of rights, human rights. You were owned and treated like a piece of equipment. Mm -hmm. And whether you got sick or died on the job, it was just a matter of replacing you. It was not until about 1911 when the sugar factory was brought into St. Kitts that the issues of occupational health and safety started to get some recognition. And um, coming out of that, you had the Factories Act, which came out of Britain and was placed on our books in order to regulate um, the, 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 the conditions of work that existed at the SKSF, the Sinkage Sugar Factory. Um, then later in, in the 70, early 70s, late 60s, when um, Southwell then as Minister of Trade and Industry spoke of the three-pronged approach to development through tourism, agriculture, and light manufacturing and the manufacturing sector started to expand. I think one of the first um, real manufacturing plants 
that came with the manufacturing of beer, but this came from the Federation, federal days when Robert Batchelor was at the federal house. And uh, standards there were important, safety standards, because it affected productivity. If you do not have a safe workplace, it will affect your productivity. Mm -hmm. You lose time when people get sick and have to be, um, be home when they ought to be in the factory working, so on. And then you have the expense, medical expenses, with respect to harm um, to people getting injured on the job. And I think it was 1981, the ILO saw this as an important aspect of work to introduce a convention. I don't I think convention number 155, um, which speaks to occupational health and safety. And it was adopted by most European gov governments. It came into the Caribbean and it was, um, it was adopted by St. Kitts, Nevis. And as a result of that, we established a tripartite approach where both government, the employer and the employee formulated how to deal with the issues of occupational health and safety uh, matters. Mm -hmm. I could remember when Curtis Mattis came here, the question of lighting was so important because there were people working on the line, you know, industrial line, and the lighting inadequate. The trade union negotiated, and the result, we were able to bring in fluorescent lights were just, just coming in. So they moved away from the old bulb and the, the bayonet bulb and brought in the, 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 the long fluorescent lamps, making the place um, much brighter. The question of the seats, how you sit, ergonomics, you know, special chairs and so on were put in place. Um, the question of refreshment, water, making water available to workers in the workplace, a whole range of things. And then we moved into industries that started to use chemicals. For example, at some of the plants, you had soldering being done, and the, um, the paste that you use to solder it had certain chemicals which had toxic elements in it. And you had to now find masks and so on to put on your face when you're working. And, and the, the, the evolution of, um, of occupation health and safety came on. And so what is important to us now is to establish that in St. Kitts and Nevis, there's a culture of occupation health and safety. I think later on you'll probably hear the Social Security uh, representatives speak to it because the Social Security and back just last year on establishing um, certain mechanisms to deal with occupational health and safety standards for their own protection, protection, and in fact, for the productivity of the country. So that workers should feel more at ease. There are a lot of social issues, and there are a lot of areas of social protection that still need to be looked at in respect to um, the workers' rights and the workers' rights to health at the workplace. And I, it is important for us to give that kind of recognition now at this time. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Franks. So we're going to go now to um, Social Security. Um, and I think Mr. Franks kind of hinted at um, right. what, the right. role that Social Security um, you know, play in something as important um, as as this. Maybe what you can do at this point is to kind of expand yeah. on um, the the theme. Essentially, um, what what Stanley um, spoke to just uh, just a while ago was the fact that the Social Security Board saw it as being so very important mm -hmm. to to put more focus on the whole <coughs> question of safety and health at work, that it established a special committee of the board to give the board greater oversight in terms of the initiatives and activities that the social security offices would be embarking upon to, to create more advocacy and sensitization and so on 
the board felt it was important to, 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 to raise it to that level of having the board say, listen, we're interested in this thing. What are you all doing? And that was just last year. Um, we still have something to go. But however, the Social Security has, has been involved in the advocacy and partnership with the Labor Department since way back in 2003 when the world started. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we have, I can recall, um, specific initiatives that were, were, um, were engaged in um, under, the, under the encouragement of um, a person such as um, Fidel Oflahati, who had a very, very great interest in that from the worker's standpoint as well. But the, the idea, though, is that Social Security also is interested because Social Security is a noteworthy insurer in the area of the cost of um, non-healthy environment in the workplace um, because Social Security pays the benefits for loss of incomes, pays a benefit for reimbursement of medical expenses. And, and, and this is for er anybody who pays into the Social Security pays. Fund? In fact, employers pay a special contribution to Social Security mm -hmm. in place of what they would have had to pay under the old Workmen's Compensation Act. The Workmen's Compensation Act was repealed in 1986 with the mm -hmm. advent of Social Security coming into the, the provision of the insurance um, from that particular point. Um, the, but Social Security is committed because, yes, we have to, to insure, but Social Security is also looking at it from a humanitarian aspect as well. We are concerned about the pain and suffering just as we are concerned about um, providing a reimbursement of income. I, I mean, there's nothing that can, can compensate for pain and suffering and loss of limb and loss of life, right? But the, 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 the benefits that are paid by Social Security are pretty, pretty steep at times. At, at one time, it was hovering in the region of 1.2 million a year. And we're talking about locally here in locally St. Kitts. Kitts oh, yeah. and okay. It is trending back downwards again as we speak. And these are claims related claims for to... for <coughs> reimbursement of Injury. medical expenses, mm -hmm. claims for um, compensation for loss of income, Traveling yeah. expenses, like people have to travel abroad and so For on. Medical right? treatment, yeah. Now that is a serious issue because the way that we look at it is that there is a double whammy effect in that during points when a person becomes incapacitated as a result of mm -hmm. injury and disease, two things happen. One, they claim a benefit from Social Security so that the funds are drawn upon. There's <coughs> a demand on the funds to pay those benefits, but at the same time, there's no corresponding contributions coming in because the persons are not working. Mm. And so it's a double whammy effect. But it goes even further in terms of how we look at it from an interest in the national economy, in that during those times, the loss of productivity of the country. We have looked at statistics which show that one particular point where, for example, uh, we saw in one year 5,179 man days lost and this was a result of, of, of what? Injury on the job. People it, claiming. Injury. Yeah, yeah, people yeah. claiming wow. sick leave and so on, right? <laughs> I mean, that makes you here want to stand up on your head. Okay. Maybe we needed to have a doctor on the panel as well because we get all these no, doctor's I, I, notes. I, I, I ask because <laughs> yes. I, I know that in, in your previous um, statement, you had indicated um, injury and disease. Yeah, injury and disease. Injury and disease. Right. Yes. The because whole, whole, uh, I know that a disease can arise because of um, environment and so on, but so so right. not, not necessarily that, that way. Um, mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you have that breakdown at Social Security as to whether or not the disease was have, a result of have, the environment. It was a result we of... We do have those. Yeah. I can't quote them to you now, right, okay. we do have mm -hmm. um, in terms of the types of injuries and the types of diseases. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and, and but the total figure that I gave you just now was for everything okay. as a result of being affected by injury and or disease. 
the persons who would have lost all those 5,179 mandates in one particular year. Yeah, and but the, the, that, that is a very, interest, a very interesting statistics, and as you said, it is here rising. Um, at the end of the day, the, 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 it is a deve developmental issue. It is. A serious developmental issue because the impact that it could also have now and the, the inflows into the social funds mm -hmm. and um, the impact the, uh, and um, pauperizing, so to speak, the funds that have been set up for social protection. Yeah, uh, you uh, our, 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 our um, integration not only into the, the regional economy mm -hmm. but the global co uh, economy we are the, 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 we have to be on the same level playing field as the major players um, in, 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 the, in, in the economic world okay. and then we are having these challenges Th this is very interesting to me as well because apparently you are including as you say notes that you get from doctors saying that hey listen um, Tom Jones is sick whether he has a call or he broke a fingernail. Once it is connected um, to the job, then it will be okay. categorized as uh, again, um, again, uh, th that is a, a, to me a, a loose categorization. Mm -hmm. Connected to the job. When you say connected to the job, you're saying it arose as a, a result that's of correct. him being involved in that's a job. Correct. Okay. That's correct. Well, that's that's important to categorize yeah, as yeah. opposed to somebody who has some illness. Right. You see, yeah. The or, 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 has yeah. An, or has the an accident totally that different. has yeah. nothing the totally, totally different. The totally different. Yes. Yes. The point I'm making that injury, injury. There is the payment for that from Social Security. Mm -hmm. You're covered because it's workman compensation. compensation. Yeah. But apart from that, you can have at the workplace the environment with toxic elements in it. That's right. Poor lighting, which can affect your vision, right. and so on. The so these, and all the, those the, sort of these are issues. You have mm -hmm. backaches and so on. Ventilation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ventilation. And so that, that as a statistic right. must be entered, yeah. is that you are paying <coughs> for these things. Yeah. Yeah, the reason why I'm and engaging yeah, yeah. on that particular statistic from an employer's standpoint is that, as I said with respect to the Labor Department, I think the inspection ought to be more robust. And I think that if you have statistics yeah, you're, which you're point right. into a particular mm -hmm. issue, that, that's right. I, I don't know if there is a particular issue. Let us see the statistics. Yeah. That's Look, right. Well, right. from what we are seeing here, something is wrong in your workplace. Mm -hmm. You need to look at this. And I believe, as I said before, responsible employers yeah. must pay attention, must make the employees aware of the issues. They themselves also must make sure that the place and the, the, the area in which they have people um, working yeah, um, must be safe. Yeah. Okay. But we well, need to use those statistics. Yes, e exactly. Indeed. And I, yes, and I agree with you. Uh, we, get, we have to take a break now. We're going to hear from our friends at Brimstone Hill one more time. That's the Brimstone Hill Society um, who is sponsoring our um, um, show, the, the round table, and as I said, even the special edition. Um, just one little caveat. We're going to add um, callers to the mix tonight a little bit later on. So if you have questions, you have concerns, or you just want to make a general comment, um, you can give us a call later on at 466-2666. And for all the folks uh, um, who are tech savvy and you have access to the Play Store, um, which is Samsung operated, um, ZIZ's newest toy, our app, <laughs> is available. So you can take your phone wherever you want to go and you can actually watch or listen. You have a choice. We'll be back on the other side. <laughs> okay, I need my pen. <laughs>
As we continue, I want to say um, special thanks, of course, to um, Tio um, for giving up um, his action sports tonight um, to ensure that we get this on in a timely manner and also for the um, persistence consistent persistent is i don't know if you can use that that sounds like a clash of in english to me of um poetry, <laughs> poetry? okay <laughs> uh mrs shiverton who would not let us do the show on any other day except um today and my accountant of course is very happy for that so we get back into our discussions <laughs> um, right now. Mr. Amri, I'm going to um, come back to you because I think we're getting into an interesting um, dynamic as it relates to the numbers that um, Social Security is, is giving us, um, 5,000. And of course, as an employee here at ZIZ, um, myself, I mean, you know, you get, you get scared sometimes or nervous, or I don't know if that's the right word, when you see... I mean, you know, some of the stuff that comes in and tell you, hey, listen, this person needs to be off of um, 10 days. Now, I mean, I don't have anything. I mean, of course, people get injured, um, people get sick, and all sickness or injury, they're not visible. So, I mean, where does your department stand as it relates to um, numbers? I'm sure you've had to, I mean, you know, um, referee cases where people are not sure. Is this person really sick? Um, or did they get sick from something that happened on the job? Um, Mr. Agawa, um, really it's a, a very interesting um, conversation mm -hmm. developing with respect to this um, particular um, matter. And um, certainly, um, Mr. Franks, um, the union rep here, had um, quite um, elegantly and eloquently um, construct um, the evolutionary pathway. Um, the development of, from the, the industrial, the services sector, the light sector, the agricultural sector, and all the, 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 the issues that have now been spawned as a result of that, that impact the, 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 the world of work um, as it relates to um, um, occupational safety um, and health. And of course, now with that, that impact with the construct of the social um, protection funds and that sort of thing, the impact that these issues um, have on, on that. And from the manufacturing um, sector, um, Mr. Maynard here has indicated, you know, how in, in terms of the, the, the issue of productivity, sustainability, competitiveness, and that sort of thing. And so the, the Department of Labor, as the, the centennial um, for the government overseeing this whole thing, and the, we are the ones there, and Mr. Um, Maynard made the point that um, we need to be a little more robust, and I fully endorse it. We are the ones who have to go into the environment and to be moving and to creating, to be he help to create that culture of um, pre prevention in the workplace. Um, the, the figures are very horrific, they are, they are, they are scary. And um, certainly when we look around in our jurisdiction and see the cavalier approach that um, let us say persons in the agricultural field, um, mm -hmm. how they treat chemical uses and so on. Um, we look at the construction industry. Um, everybody, they're working in cement, nobody have on a shirt, nobody have on a hat, hat and a number of things that create problems. The, the skin absorbing the, the, the cement <coughs> dust and issues now of, um, you know, um, the lungs and other um, 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 <coughs> dermatologist issues of the skin um, arising. Um, even in the services, se the services sector, all of these things here, and it does underscore the need for that. What is the Labor Department doing and, and with respect to that? We have started out um, a, a, a massive outreach program. It, we have gone into the schools, even to the primary school, even to the primary school level. We have gone into the schools. We have had outreach programs, um, town hall meetings, and we have a radio program going. We are in constant collaboration with our um, social security um, friends to... Uh, and, and that radio program is on ZIZ, right? And the ra uh, it there is you on ZIZ. Uh, thank you. Just wanted to make sure that we get that <laughs> it, is on, it is on, on ZIZ. Thank, thank you, sir. So we are moving because we recognize that what is key to all of this here is education. Integrating education into the whole aspect of developing occupational health and safety as a culture and to have it cascade 
and to permeate, to write throughout um, our society. So some of the instances that I'm speaking of with those cavalier attitudes with the construction workers, mm -hmm. you know, they, there's a kind of macho thing and that sort of thing. But it is a, it is a serious cause somewhere down the line mm -hmm. um, with respect to the injuries that are popping up and um, other issues that are, are, are spawned from that. And so that is where we are. And we, I can, I, I, I can safely say that um, we um, and the new Minister um, of Labor, um, he has fully endorsed um, what is happening um, in terms of the, the aggression that we need to bring um, to get our message out and that sort of thing. Certainly in concert, uh, because it has to be multi-sectorial with all the stakeholders mm -hmm. in, the, in the world of work um, to get this job yeah. done. I'm, I'm gonna come to, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna come to, um, to you, uh, Mr. Maynard, um, because I think that there were some in, important points that were raised um, as it relates to the education and sometimes the cavalier um, attitude mm -hmm. that some workers <coughs> take. Um, what is the message, um, you know, from your group as uh, as the employer? I mean, I know this has to cost you if somebody gets injured on the job. Well, of course, um, it, it, it costs you not only directly from an injury on the job, but mm -hmm. as um, was said with respect to productivity mm -hmm. because correct, correct. that is an important person on the line and he's no longer there you either have to employ a substitute or you have to delay that so we we know that it is costly not to have a safe environment for people to work in not only a safe environment I said earlier that responsible employers uh -huh. do certain things I could tell you some of the things which we do um, you introduce specific standards, mm -hmm. certified standards. For instance, at Caribou, we have what is called HACCP. HACCP is a food safety program, but it does not only look at the safety of the product that is leaving in the factory. Mm -hmm. It also looks at good manufacturing practice, mm -hmm. which includes um, occupational safety and health, so that there are a number of awareness program incorporated into that type of, of initiative so that people are made aware of safety issues, people are made aware of what clothes they should wear to, 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 to work, um, not to have a tie on when you go into the factory, otherwise you might get sucked in by a, by, by a, by a, a motor and those kind of awareness issues. So we believe that one of the greatest resources that we can apply is that of ensuring that workers are aware and that the environment is safe. And that is why um, we, have, we also have some ISO programs <coughs> uh. which speak to this type of standard. And again, I must come back to the agencies because I think the government agencies are important in ensuring that um, we do not have irresponsible behavior on work sites. Uh. We talk about agricultural workers. Why are agricultural workers allowed to be so cavalier with respect to chemicals? Why are construction workers allowed to be walking around in concrete without shoes and without proper protection? Right. And I think that's where the agency comes in. Yes, I believe the employers must be responsible. But you know how life is. <laughs> and then you, so that's why you have the government. I, I firmly believe that this whole thing of occupational safety and health has to be a, a marriage between um, multiplicity of interests. Yes. Um, the government the employer, the employee, and agencies um, other than the labor department to make sure that you quite rightly say that this is a developmental issue. Yes. And yes. if we want to move on from where we are, we have to take these issues very, very seriously. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, um, Mr. Franks. I, I you want to make a small on point this. Yeah, on this here because what Spencer said is very interesting. And it actually was followed up by the points that were made by um, Lincoln. Um, the fact is that we must recognize that in a population of, let's, let me put it, 60,000 persons, mm -hmm. we must be able to manage the safety and protection of that population. Because, you see, it is not only the safety at the workplace. It is the household safety as well. Mm -hmm. It is the safety 
of shopping, the safety on the road, the public safety. Hmm. It is the safety, which is called recreational safety. And all of these issues seek to make living a more safe engagement. And government, of course, must take the responsibility and the lead. So government must engage all of the various stakeholders. And stakeholders must come together. Somebody representing the households, house, the housewives, or the, the house husbands. As, 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 as <laughs> <laughs> you must have the employers, the employees, the church, because you have to be safe in church as well. <laughs> I thought, you know, you, I thought you were going to say saved in church. <laughs> well, you have to be safe. Well, I'm, I'm not, yeah, I was being of, of, of a sa safety. <laughs> uh, safety, safety. But, but my question. But the, the point I'm making, though, <coughs> is that there is a cost to all this. There is a cost that you have to bear if you're going to start it in the education in school. But it costs one right true. Every nook and cranny of society, and where who is going to meet that car? How are you going to establish that center for occupational health and safety? For safety, full stop. Correct. But there's different components to this, though, because I'm not sure is the labor department responsible. Say, for instance, I go to a grocery store, um, I slip and I fall. Public safety. There's no sign. Um, is this consumer <laughs> fears or is this labor? Well, that's um, a different term thing. Uh, <laughs> it is. It, it is a labor. It is a labor um, concern. It is a labor concern. You you've mm -hmm. gone in a public place. Um, th that that person would have slipped in there. Um, at what stage? Um, the person was mopping the floor. What signage was there the to, to working, indicate yeah. a number of things yeah. and that? But you have you know, lost that person. Here. But you have, lost, force. You, you have lost that person. But Stan is making yeah. some very interesting points because one of the, the critical things too, as he said, that this thing permeates throughout the nook and cranny of the society. Mm -hmm. One of the important things that we have to look is not only on the job but the migration mm -hmm. into yes. the household yes. um, of, 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 of um, issues that uh, born, spawn on the job and um, coming home, fellow coming home and just putting down the chemical the lady ah. clothes or <laughs> something like that. That's and then persons story. within the household are yeah. uh, um, being impacted on yeah. the yeah. 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 you have that sort of, um, you know, the, 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 the vicarious responsibility um, issues and a number <coughs> of things that are coming that now creates a problem. And, so, and it so, is this is very, so this is very, widespread very, very, very yeah. is massive. And, again, I get back to that word, awareness. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because I was reflecting on... I don't want it. I don't want to be too pinpointed <coughs> so that people can know what exactly who I'm talking about. But there's a, a job that is going on, and I realize that there is one section of of a wall in the job which is almost perfectly plastered, yeah. and you had another section, which obviously, I mean, it's mediocre compared to that, yeah. and it's because. You have skilled people working. These fellows are skillful. These masons we have around are very skillful. But they lack the knowledge and awareness. Why is that so good and this is so bad? They don't know. Right. Why cracks appear in the wall mm -hmm. and not over mm -hmm. there? They don't know. But they're good at plastering. Awareness. I don't think that we're spending enough time on awareness at mm -hmm. all. And you can look at the developed countries. Mm -hmm. Look at what you see when you walk into mm -hmm. a, a particular mm -hmm. area, whether of work or recreation. You see signs. Exactly. You see notices. Yes, yes. Right? And I believe, Sorry. again, responsible employers must ensure that at least people, when they're in their workplace, they know that, look, if you're dealing with this kind of chemical and you're going to go home, don't take that shirt that you're using to get that chemical out of the warehouse 
and go home and put that shirt next to your baby food. Right? So we really need to work on the awareness, awareness issue, both yeah, yeah, yeah. inside the workplace and outside the workplace. There is a point that I wanted to highlight, um, yeah. and that is that all the stakeholders, I know that we sometimes put a lot of emphasis on the role of government as enforcer, so to speak, right? But as Lincoln was alluding to, there are some, res there are some responsible employers who take it <coughs> as a responsibility, not because there is a law, but because it is a moral obligation mm -hmm. to have a safe workplace. So they take that as a responsibility. But they have to invest, each and every stakeholder, the workers must invest time and resources in terms of creating the kind of mindset that builds the culture of prevention in everything that they do. The employer must be prepared to invest time, resources, whatever it is. Government also would do its part. Social security comes in in terms of assisting with the advocacy and the awareness raising. This week coming up, for example, tomorrow evening on ZIZ television and NTV8 on Nevis, we will be airing a program dealing with this specific issue about safety and health as well, because we continue to, to be mindful that we have to keep putting it in people's ear that this is important. And we're trying to share some, some additional tips, such as, as what one can do in the workplace to start to generate or to, to, to build the culture of prevention in terms of setting up safety committees as a matter of course. As a matter of course, in other words, don't leave it to chance and wait until something happens. Inspections must be done. And, and I wanted to mention, too, that one of the drawbacks that we have in St. Kitts and Davis and perhaps some other places is the lack of appropriate supervision. The lack of appropriate supervision. Lincoln was talking about the two walls. One wall was looking <laughs> beautiful, and the other one was looking now, obviously, who was supposed to have supervised to see that the other one looked as good as the first one mm -hmm. may have dropped the ball, right? But I find that we have a problem, a crisis, if you will, of supervision in St. Kitts and Nevis. Chelsea, and I want to make a note, very, very because uh, and, uh, this is in all of this year that we are speaking, um, we must not allow the, to fall to the cracks. The, the legal implications of all of this, yes. yeah. people would sue you. Sue you. Yeah. Um, for wrongful death litigation, issues, yeah. Yeah, litigation, yeah. Mm -hmm. and their sort negligence, of thing. and that would, um, uh, um, and so that looms large what, what in is all the, of this. What is the history of this in St. Kitts now? Because it's, I mean, St. Kitts Nevis, it's P people uh, are becoming uh, enthusiasts now. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, you yeah. lost some idea. We, we, we have a lot of lawyers. It's so coming around. Sure. The American, yeah. the American arm approach to arm to litigation, understand? We're getting, we're we're getting, getting into we're getting, the same. I, I wouldn't, but I wouldn't Lincoln, complain about it. Go ahead. I want, I, I want to touch on, on, on a point that you made. I think it's mm -hmm. fundamental. The question of awareness. Yeah. And I want to use an example. I, I think I, I have everybody permission to use it. The Bastia High School. Mm -hmm. so if there was the awareness, we would never have a Bastia High School situation. If we got into it. Because when I, when I became aware of it and understood that you had all these chemicals there exposed and so for such a long time, mm -hmm. it means that nobody was See? taking care. Nobody was paying attention. Nobody was paying attention. <coughs> there was no awareness of the, of, of the hazard that existed. Other than the cleanup, it would not, it would not be allowed to go so far. And that point about awareness, and people becoming more aware, there must be signs, there must be things speaking to the importance of safety, occupational health and safety mm -hmm. standard. They, 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 they must, you must talk about the, uh, 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 um, what you must use and what you shouldn't use, and the dangers of this or the dangers of that. I want you to see more, more, more the dangers of asbestos. Hmm. Someone said some people feel if you, if you look at asbestos. <laughs> you <laughs> get me so feel you must you must be played a part about asbestos. Yeah, but there's something that is just as injury injurious. And, and and to to add to your point though, um, we've had a series of international events in St. Kitts, Nevis over the years. I mean, these international um, ICC for cricket, yeah. um, we get the CPL people coming in. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's one of the, as somebody who's worked in, in cricket, um, 
That's one of the main things that they um, concentrate on. I mean, something that we may think as simple as an exit sign. Yeah. Well, so when anybody know where the door is. Uh, I mean, you know, that's, that's, what, that's what we said. Yeah. But they understand yeah, yeah. how important it is that in the event that something happens, must have clear passages, everybody knows signs. where. That's the reason why when you go on the airplanes, they tell you if it get dark, they're going to shine a light on the floor, yeah. and you can walk to the exit of the, the aircraft. Um, we've had people who have been trying to call. So um, we're, what we're going to do, we're going to take a break, um, hear from the folks at Brimstone again. And if you're interested in calling us to comment, question, or just um, share your thoughts, um, we appreciate that. The number is 466-2666. And for the folks who are listening to us on radio who are customer calling, um, 465-2555, we're in a different location tonight, so you have to call us at 466-2666. And we want to say a special good night to all the folks who are listening to us via TuneIn Radio and on www.zizonline.com. We have everywhere that you can think to reach these people. Mm -hmm. We'll be back after this break. Tune in, eh? Mm. Welcome back to the round table and we've had callers who are itching to get in um, to um, you know share their thoughts or be part of the program tonight and we definitely appreciate that we have a couple callers online and we're gonna go straight to the phones um, caller welcome to the round table hello good evening good evening to the entire panel good evening, good evening. I have a concern a long time ago you used to have nurses waiting until they reach on the job to put on a uniform, and upon returning from work, they would put, take off those uniforms and put on their own clothes. I think there was a reason for that. Now we have realized that persons are leaving the hospital in their uniforms, showing up to work from home in their uniforms, and I'd like you all to adjust that, hmm. because there is some <clears throat> health hazard mm -hmm. associated with that. Another subtle thing that we're not looking at is <clears throat> the overtime that a lot of workers work. Some of them work years without taking vacation. And I think that stress level could be a problem to person's health. Is there a limit as to the number of years somebody should work <laughs> without vacation? Is there a limit to the number of hours of overtime? Because all these stressful conditions can affect people's health. I've been listening for your responses. All right. Thank you very much for your call. Um, we got a couple more callers on the line. And we'll, what we'll do, we'll take notes, as I say, um, and then we'll respond. Um, good evening, caller. Welcome to the round table. Good evening, sir. Go ahead. We're hearing you. Um, this, my concern is something to do with labor department. Mm -hmm. I, I know other people is going to be calling in. Labor Department don't do nothing for workers. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be very, very blunt about it. They don't do nothing for workers. Right? Uh, I know of someone that had a problem some time ago. <coughs> Labor Department did nothing at all for them. 
right? Then I know of someone else who um, got, um, they put him on, what do you call that? The, 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 what do you call that thing where you have to collect these money from the labor department? Uh, Severance pay? Your severance pay. And that person had held to get their money from the um, true labor department. So I would like labor department to um, adjust that for me. And then I'm going straight down to Mr. Hamilton with social security. Okay. When they're taking so much money out of people's money every month or weekly, and if anything happens to you, you have problems, you have to wait weeks to get your money. Um, I'm so happy I never had to claim from um, social security, right? But social security for me, they're not doing nothing for people. You cannot go to them to ask them to do anything for you. Right? And every month or weekly you take up the money, as I said before, uh, they're giving you $2,500 to your family when you passed away. That can't even bury you in a sawfish box. And I always talk to Mr. Hamilton about this. And something has to be done about this kind of thing here because it's not good enough. Right? We, we as workers maybe have to take it up in a different way and deal with it then. Because there's nothing going on for us. I will listen off here. Okay, Carla. Thank you. Thank you very much for um, making um, your contribution and your points. We got callers trying to come in. Um, good evening again. Welcome to the round table. Hello, good night. Good night. Good night, good night to the panel. Good night, sir. Mm -hmm. Labor Department. I couldn't agree with the caller better. <laughs> Labor Department. If the Labor Commissioner will talk to people as good as we talking on this street. We'll be good. All right, call, caller, we're no, not... No. Call, hold on, caller, hold on. We're not going to get... We're not going to go there tonight, and I'm not going to have you... I mean, you know, disrespect my guests. Well, so it about. is. It is disrespect. You you can't disrespect my guests, or we're not going to hear from you. We're not going to entertain that at all. I understand if you have a problem, if you have an issue with the Labor Department, you know, we can, we can say it in a in a better way. Okay, let me put it better. Thank you, sir. Let me cover up the mess, right? The Labor Department, when people got problems and frightened to go there, it's frightening for the country, right? And I talking from experience. When you don't go to the Labor Department and cannot get proper answers, right? Somebody who's supposed to be protective of workers, it make you frightening. And I would like to know from the Labour Commissioner tonight how much hours of work I have to work, right? And the Labour Department needs to go around by the different job and inform the workers and what they write that. They do not do that. When you go, you know how many times I request the Labour Department to come where I work to keep a meeting with the workers then? I want to point out me, right? All of them afraid. When you talk to people about going to the Labour Department, they say, boy, not me, me not going down there. People frighten me. We Labour laws in St. Kitts, I don't know if it's, I don't know when the failure stops, but let's hope tonight is a fresh start and how we can it. Good night. All right, caller, thank you um, very much. And I just want to make, let the callers know that this is not a bashing um, session tonight. Um, the last caller just referenced people coming to his workplace. Um, to tell him things. Um, the workers also have a responsibility. You have a responsibility to find out what conditions you're going into to work. Um, so, just my little tidbit in there. Yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> Social Security and the Labor Department can definitely speak for themselves. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, I, all I want to say, this is my word for tonight. Right. Uh, this is my word for tonight. Yes. And again, I believe, because I know Social Security does things for people. Yeah. I know the Labor Department does things for people. Are you telling people what you're doing? Are you making people aware of your benefits, Social yeah. Security? Yeah. Awareness again. Yeah. Okay. Awareness. Ho wait, wait, let's take, we got two more calls holding on. Let's I, try to get as many calls in yeah, as possible. Wait, 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 if this is going to be lose, quick, we'll take yeah, it. You, lo you, you, you lose the, the points that, that you, you, you make. If you just want to forget the things and stuff. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but we I don't want to keep the calls like, waiting. No, no. But um, I just want to speak to some issues that the, um, the caller raised. Um, the question of overtime. Mm -hmm. um, when you're put to work 
over time when the law itself says that you work eight hours and if you work overtime you get time and a half payment mm -hmm. for it you get eight hours mm -hmm. 40 hours a, a week and we engage yourself because the money is sweet and we get mental fatigue which is an illness exactly mm -hmm. and that is why you have the holiday repay act because the holiday repay, pay act gives you a minimum it's a, it just says all the vacation you can get but it gives you the minimum of 14 days for you to go and relax and rehabilitate yourself but there are workers who feel as though it's an opportunity to make yeah. the holiday pay a bonus right. okay mm -hmm. all, right. all right so that is something that and the point is that that, that, that is made of awareness of okay. what the law says in that and then you want to bash the labor department in respect okay. to Sa sally hold on one second i'm gonna have to make you hold because we got yeah. a lot of callers coming in all right, okay. um <laughs> we're gonna take <laughs> notes and we're gonna give ourselves at least enough time to you know um, answer some of the concerns and questions from the callers. Okay. Thank you, caller. Welcome to the round table. Hello. I want to speak to Stanley. All right. Can you please, what you what you have to do, Stanley. though, in order for us to get through to us, okay. you're going to have to move away from your computer, your okay. television, or your okay. radio. We're getting a bad feedback. Okay. Okay. Thank okay. you. Sounds, now, a sounds now, better now. Now, Stanley, I'm glad that we see in terms of occupation and safety, one, you have to create an awareness. But so much people talking about this as labor commissioner. Give a definition to the people and let them know what is occupational health and safety. What? All right. Um, yeah. we, we're going to move on to the next yeah. caller because, and, and callers, when you're calling in, please, we want we want to keep a certain quality on the program, and so you know you have to. I know you want to hear yourself. That's fine. You're going to hear yourself, but listen to the phone. If you listen to the phone, you're going to hear everything. You're listening to the radio or the television or your computer there's a delay and it gets confused the conversation gets lost um, yeah I, I don't know if we have calls waiting but well, we do I, have I want we, to react we have to the, the caller go ahead i mean because he was talking about letting people know what you mean by occupational That's safety yeah. and health and just to list for instance from my company two policies the objective of the our policy with respect to health and safety mm -hmm. um, to provide and maintain safe plant material systems of work and a safe place and to provide employees contractors and all others on the site including the, the general public to undertake risk assessments and mm -hmm. to plan and organize and control and monitor and review preventative and protective measures those are just two of the items in, mm -hmm. in a policy which is speaking towards ensuring that we have um, health and safety you know on our work thanks for that um, we do have calls so welcome into the round table yes a very interesting topic tonight yes sir. thank you I have you. a serious concern and it concerns the entrance at the main national bank that is all in Georgia I believe that it is a fire hazard <laughs> and as we start to wait for I would like the Labour Commissioner in particular to <laughs> address that for me. It's very, very concerning to me as a citizen and also as a customer of the bank. That will bother me door at national bank. Thank you. Thank you very much um, for um, your concern. Call, of course. I mean, we're talking about exit um, and, and entrance. Yes. yes. Um, we got another caller. Let's go ahead and take this one. Good Hello. evening, caller. Welcome. Good evening. Good evening. We're hearing you. Hello? Yes, we're hearing you. Go ahead. Okay, this question is to Mr. Amory. Mm -hmm. um, concerning public holiday, um, is it that your um, employer is not supposed to pay you? Because um, they put you on a, like an hourly rate, and they said they can't pay for public holiday. So like to address that, Okay. So you're referring to, okay, well, the call is gone, so... <laughs> Um, holiday pay. That's what we call it. <laughs> um, we got more callers coming in. Good evening, caller. Welcome to the round table. Yeah, hi. Good night. Good night. I'm concerned when somebody is imprisoned, right? They are considered state properties. Mm -hmm. And many times they're going to the communities to perform tasks. They are ill equipped. And many times they don't want to perform certain types of jobs. They call for the inmates and to carry those jobs. Mm -hmm. Would this help an occupational safety 
apply to inmates as well? I'd like you to address that. It's a very important question. Hey. I think without being a Labour Commissioner, the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think all jobs must be done. I'm not saying that we should um, relegate people to doing um, whatever type of job. There's a television program, Dirty Jobs, yeah, right? Yeah. But you can get equipment and gear to make sure that you're properly protected sure. yeah. in carrying yeah. out the dirty jobs, which as yeah. human beings we have to do. Yeah. Right? So I would not punish people by putting them to do work which will cause them to get ill. Right, right. You have to provide them, even if they're prisoners. They have, they have human rights still. With the necessary right. equipment. We, you, okay, they, they, we, they, we they have another call. Let's take this one call and then um, we'll, we'll come back to the notes. We have a bunch of calls that we need to address. Good evening, caller. Welcome. Hello. Good evening. Yes, go ahead. We're hearing you. Yeah, I don't need the commissioner. He need to pull his back for plenty more. If you go there and you go there with a complaint to him, then you turn off, you go back to work or whatever, your boss will tell you. He said, uh, you Safe. don't go there and you don't get no good satisfaction. Safe it ain't so the Labor Commissioner work. The Labor Safe. Commissioner put there to try the case. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Okay, Carla, thank you very much for um, your observation. Um, okay, let's take this one call and then we're going to hold the calls for a minute and, 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 and get to get you some of these answers. Uh, good evening, Carla, welcome. Yes, I'll say again, I'll talk about this. What is standing here? This is Joseph Jones, eh? Yeah. Uh, Joseph Jones, I want to stand to touch a bit on the body economics, the over economic staff, which is very important yes. to people in offices and so on. They touch that because I find that it's a very problem. People with this getting the back strings and twisted thing and so on. Mm -hmm. whatever. Did, right? All right, thank you very much for um, your call. And of course, you know, ergonomics is very important. I mean, you know, you work in offices and you see signs all over. I mean, you know, telling you how to, to sit properly um, in, in your chair. So let's go ahead. The Labor Commissioner, you've been the star of the show so far for the callers. <laughs> so we're going to um, <laughs> put you on the hot seat. <laughs> okay, thank you, Mr. Agaro. Um, yes, uh, quite a number of interesting um, questions and observations that would have been made. Um, I'm taking it from the top here. Um, certainly, the, the, the first caller um, made the point of um, stress um, and, and the issue of health workers and some of the issues of, um, of hours of work. Mm -hmm. And um, very important, um, that, that we, we recall that just a while ago, we were speaking, uh, we were speaking about the migration um, from the job into the, the household. Correct, there. correct. And um, certainly, and the nurses. Uh, and the um, nurses well. there, correct. with respect to that. And um, certainly in the second in the second line of the um, the director general's speech here, um, health workers infected while caring for patients with deadly diseases, uh -huh. and so that that brings it into perspective. And I think we, we I, I want to thank the caller for bringing that um, um, to the fore. The other issue that he um, touched on was the issue of stress and stress level, um, very critical. Um, persons working long hours of work, Mr. France would have said that some of them um, <laughs> trying to maximize hmm. a number of things, and you know, in terms of making the dollars, and at the same time, um, they're impacting their the own health, health. Uh, with respect to that, and that is why it is so critical that you you had a situation, and 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 furthermore, we had spoken about the evolution from the slave days and the uh, and, and, and and really unjust working. Um, conditions of work where people just work. And you had the development by 1968 of the Holidays Repair Act that um, encouraged people, I mean, legislated, legislated that persons must be um, given um, a holiday. And in certain jurisdictions um, all over the world, you have to take your holiday or you may very well lose your job for not taking a break. And so that is a, a very important um, aspect there. The issues are hours of work again. The, the labor laws speak to that. But uh, the, the, the world of work is changing. It's very dynamic. The world of work is very dynamic. Mm -hmm. um, sooner or later, the, this federation may maybe go to a 24-7 um, configuration of work. The hotel industry 
that um, came up in, in the 1970s and, and what it did um, reconfigure um, the issue of hours of, of work mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. Um, you can shut down the place um, because you have guests in, mm -hmm. in, in, in uh, working in your hotels and uh, other other industries and so on. And so that th those areas there, um, I must say to the listening audience that the ILO in concert with the tripartite constituents here would have um, looking reviewed the labor laws of St. Kitts and Nevis and they would have developed um, for further review by the tripartite constituents um, a, a, a labor code and a <coughs> number of things, uh, the conditions of work, the terms of work and so on, um, occupational health and safety um, is embedded in that. Um, bearing in mind that what Mr. Franks indicated that the Factories Act that we, we still operate under um, that was created in 1940 something or thereabouts. We still operate with that. And it is time with the, 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 the spread and the, the expansion of our economy and the services and the number of things that we are doing here that we must have a comprehensive, modernized um, legislative highway um, to deal with these issues here that we, we are coming um, there. The issue of severance payment. Um, severance payment, um, the department, it is a social protection um, uh, um, um, reality of funding. Somebody loses their work for whatever, for um, certain reasons that is embedded in law. Um, you may become eligible to receive the severance pay. Um, however, the Labor Department has a, a serious responsibility to investigate um, that claim that is going to come before it. No employee contribute to the severance payment fund. Yes, All the monies that goes into the severance payment fund come from the pockets of employers. They are one of the social partners. And it is it's critical, there must be a responsibility to ensure this, not only the sustainability of the fund, but at the end of the day, when any um, investigation is undertaken with respect to it, that we make sure that it, it stands any forensic test you in terms of it. its validity, its correctness, mm -hmm. and um, the, the right for the, the person to get that. Mm -hmm. And the law prescribes for us a certain um, timeline for, for dealing with that, up to three months. And if there are any other issues, thorny issues, then the law also allows the Labor Commissioner um, some leeway to further investigate um, that, that <coughs> matter. Um, and that is important. The, the issue of accountability um, is, is, is critical and to make, uh, ensuring that um, it, is, it is done um, what, right. Yeah, okay, right. One, one, mm -hmm. somebody mentioned the um, entrance to National Bank. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I, mean, I am not the chairman of National yeah. Bank anymore, <laughs> but I think that I have some knowledge of that. that, that the, is um, a, a fire exit arrangement there, yeah. okay. um, but there are some safety issues which require that that entrance be the way it is. Safety okay. issues with respect to security, yeah. and you can't and speak uh, about security, yeah. um, uh, but there is an exit arrangement. Okay. And, yeah. and again, it's a security issue, that, so you have to be careful when you speak about it, but I can assure that, that caller that there is a, a fire exit arrangement. Mm -hmm. in, but in talk, talking about that though, is it a requirement, um, and I don't know um, who, who, who can answer this, but is it a requirement um, for employers to have um, fire drills uh, at a certain I'm, I'm happy that you, you, you bring up that because I've just made the note mm -hmm. um, with respect. Um, whilst I, um, I'm, I'm hearing um, Lincoln here with respect to the issue of um, the mm -hmm. security um, mm -hmm. thing, and um, it, 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 it sparked in my mind. Um, so what if you have a fire drill, um, and um, even certain for consumers inside yeah. of the place, and the persons um, who work in the place, and it is very important, fire drills, um, egress and egress, evacuation procedures out of buildings and that sort of thing. Um, Bassi is not, um, uh, it, it is an evolving um, 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 town in, in, in many ways. And I think it is very important that we now begin to um, embed also in the culture that awareness mm -hmm. conducting fire drills, whether it is from government headquarters, the bank, 
um, the new social security building and that sort of thing. What are the evacuation plans? Yes, Who right. are responsible for floor one and floor two? We are going up in the air now. Wardens, um, wardens. And, and that, that sort of thing. Some of the older buildings um, in Bass State that may only just have one ingre um, a, um, entrance and exit um, point yeah. and that sort of thing. What happens? Um, if something were, were, were to happen. And I believe this is a part of the awareness That's right. that we have to now begin to, 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 and, to, to look at and, with respect to this um, particular and, and issue. Not, and not only just the buildings that have only one, one way in, one way out, mm -hmm. but also the buildings that have the um, emergency exits. I mean, how, what's the process? Who opens it just in yeah, case there's it, a fire? It is I mean, important. we heard of an incident it where somewhere in the U.S. and then in yeah. Argentina, where so many people, I mean, these people, the in people who died, industry. were piled up at the right. um, exit door. They oh, knew yeah. where the yeah. exit door was, was, the emergency exit. <laughs> of course, it was the responsibility of the responsible employer yeah. Yeah. to make sure that within that entity, that the employees mm -hmm. are well drilled and well versed and well right. aware of how to exit people in an in a emergency mm -hmm. situation. That's right. That's right. That's uh, they may not necessarily broadcast it, although I know in places like the United States, you have to let people see where that exit is. Oh, correct, correct. Right? Absolutely. So again, it all comes back to awareness. And again, it comes back to policing these things. Policing yes. these uh, things, supervision. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to comment. A, um, on any one of you guys have um, to, to comment on the callers? That yeah, I, I, just, we'll, I just want to uh, we'll take some more comments. callers for the callers um, who, um, give me a second, um, uh, Mr. France, for the callers who are trying to get in, we've decided to um, take um, <laughs> we've decided to take some more calls, so you could call us. And I know I just got a message. Someone's trying to call us from Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So we thank you for listening, Atlanta. Um, the number is 869-466-2666. Um, you can't reach us on none of the U.S. numbers um, in because we're in the TV studio. Okay. We're going to go to uh, Mr. Franks br briefly, um, Mr. Hamilton, mm -hmm. and then we're going to take a break and come back. <laughs> two, two small points I want to make. I don't want to touch on the arm that the caller, Mr. Jones, who called in because he's an expert on um, occupational health and safety. Um, but just to mention, because he probably think I should tell the public, that e economics deal, uh, ergonomics deals with um, a satisfactory arrangement for your posture when you're doing the work. Mm -hmm. um, because of the coverage of your spine and so on, um, and you must be able to sit comfortable and do your work. Because people end up with back injuries and back pains and so on if they're not seated properly. So the science that deals with proper posture, mm -hmm. proper seating, proper standing, proper whatever you are at, at the workplace, that is ergonomics. So um, Mr. Jones and myself can discuss that <laughs> off here at some other time. <laughs> the, <laughs> the question of the holiday, the public holidays, yeah. whether ones should be paid or not, there are statutory holidays mm -hmm. and there are public holidays. For example, the governor will just say, well, um, declare tomorrow a public holiday because of the cricket and so on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, that is why it is important to be a member of a trade union. That is why. Because your trade union can negotiate with your employer. Don't worry, we'll just send for it you. To <laughs> for you. For you. This is from David. Public information. Public information. <laughs> Awareness. Public information. Awareness. Awareness. That's, yeah. that's the buzzword that, um, tonight. You can join the trade union. And I make certain that those conditions, those holidays, can be negotiated and be part of your collective agreement, whether you get Easter off and Good Friday off and be paid, paid holidays providing that you come to work the day before mm -hmm. and work the day after. These are things that can be done. And you don't have to blame the Labor Department because maybe it is a misnomer the department is called the Labor Department because that department deals with industrial relations. It's not only for the workers, it's for the employer as well. It is there to bring peaceful solutions to any problem, yeah, the problem. Yeah, the between mission. the employer. Yeah. So and the employer. Yeah, and, I, yes, and, and just to you say, know, I know about it. You yeah. don't go there and think that he must give you right. Correct. And, 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 and because one of the callers, one of the callers did mention, okay, so I went and I talked to the Labor Department 
and the labor department, well, I go back to my job and my boss is saying whatever. Well, the labor department has to talk to your, bob, your boss. If you make an accusation against your boss, I mean, how do you resolve the issue if you don't talk to the boss? But I promise Chess, yeah. Chess well, well, I'm going to hold Stanley, off you for a while. Yeah, what Stanley just uh, said is very significant uh -huh. because if you have an employment entity where you have several workers working for an employer, each individual is likely to be, be looking at his own personal interest while the employer is looking at the employer's interest. But collective bargaining is important and carries some weight. And it also carries some responsibilities because here now we have an opportunity for the trade union to, to take part, an active part in the education mm -hmm. and awareness of its members Correct. so that it can really demonstrate, hey, I'm really interested in you mm -hmm. and your mm -hmm. welfare. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this is where you mm -hmm. get some, some action sometimes. In, uh, in fact, when you have a, a dynamic trade union moment, you, you get more action than when you have people just individuals yeah. here and there looking at their own oh, personal interests yeah. and having their personal yeah. rights. Right, and I think Kari Bui can attest to that. We have right. had a very good relationship oh, yeah. with oh, yeah. the, oh, yeah. the, the, oh, yeah. the trades and labor union. Just, yeah. to yeah. to, just to respond to the caller, though, who, who spoke about uh, Social Security not doing anything, yeah. that, of course, is a topic for another day. <laughs> but um, <laughs> and you, we, know, you know where to come to get it. We do, <laughs> we do seek to do our best in keeping with the provisions of the law no. that we're working mm -hmm. with, mm -hmm. right? Um, in terms of time taken to set claims, we, yes, we have always had challenges, but I, I dare say that when it comes to settling claims for employment injury, you have to ensure that the claim, the injury claim, is well investigated. Um, you have to ensure that all of the T's are crossed and all the I's are dotted because persons can claim employment injury and it may not be employment injury. Mm -hmm. And yes. it carries yes. a different rate of benefit. Yeah. And so Social Security as the insurer has to be careful to ensure that the proper rate of benefit is paid depending on the particular circumstance. And so sometimes that will take a little while. Mm -hmm. But we do make an effort to pay as soon as is practically possible. Mm -hmm. and, and I thank the caller for, for, for keeping us on our toes. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I, we don't mind persons giving us this sort of criticism because it keeps us on our toes and at the end of the day we're here to serve them well okay. it, we um what we're gonna do we're gonna hold we're gonna hold here we're gonna hold for a minute um i know we have two calls waiting so we'll take these calls and then we go to a break because we want to get as many callers in um as possible so call if you're there welcome to the round table okay so looks like we lost that one um do we have a second caller hello Yes, go ahead. Good, good night. Yes, go ahead. I wonder not whether the first caller had to drop off because we were not here a long time and, 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 and phone call call. Go right ahead, go right ahead. Um, but you're on now, so, you know. Yeah, but, uh, no, but I was not here for a long time and it cost money. Yeah. Okay, so, sir. So, it's an and I don't apologize for that. <laughs> yes, I understand. Let me tell you Mm-hmm. Now, I can't see where you have a genuine deal when you're the the um, the working class, when you're the um, the workers, um, company, you have a children's bill, but I have work under, and I work with him, I work under him, and they they have um, a system and they say the six companies say they are paying for every holiday in the year. Easter, with Monday, hours, Monday, hours, Tuesday, every, every, every Monday. And every time two of those holidays fall in the same week, I only get this one. The same two units they have here sitting in the with which, 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 <laughs> we, we, we got we got your point i mean this is a personal thing it seems as if uh, i don't know maybe you need to take it up with another group i don't know have you been to the labor department <laughs> or to uh, a lawyer um maybe that's um where, where you need to go with this one so we do we have another call okay so um we're gonna take the break first let's hear from our folks at brimstone hill and then um we'll come, come back. right back very interesting um subject tonight
Welcome back to um, our special edition of the um, Roundtable tonight. And again, I want to thank Tio and his staff at um, Action Sports for affording us the opportunity to be on live um, tonight. I did mention that someone from overseas were try was trying to get in, um, the information in. They did send it um, via um, social media. So let me read. It says, I think employers need to start training and educate the employees how to look for potential hazards. Mm -hmm. Um, and that would be a start in changing the safety culture at the workplace. And I know this person very well. They That's work in um, a manufacturing um, plant. And sometimes, I mean, you know, I go to Atlanta and I wonder, oh, my God, what is he wearing? Is he a doctor? Is he whatever it is? Because everything is so protected because of the chemicals that, um, you know, this person works around. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to you, um, yeah. Labor Commissioner. Yeah. Um, thank you, um, um, Clement. Um, and, and, uh, and that, um, I, I will just touch on that um, aspect of it, the training and education. Um, this program is really all about awareness tonight. And um, Lincoln here has been stressing the role of uh, responsible um, employers. employers. Mm -hmm. And the, the same thing here with the trade union and the insurer um, who is here um, in our midst um, here in this, at this panel. It says to me that the, the tripartism has to work. We have to cooperate and build partnerships. It must be multi-sectoral moving forward with respect to, to, to what we have to do. Um, it's just not just a governmental agency, but all the, um, those persons in the world of work, how to come together and recognize that we are all in this boat together. And <coughs> it is critical of the, 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 the construct of this particular um, culture and where we would want it to evolve and how to sustain it and what, how, how do we want it to re resonate um, um, in, in the future. So that is going to be very critical. One of the things I want to touch on, um, Clement, is uh, that um, the caller who um, indicated that they, they come to the Department of Labor and by the time they go back, the boss know about it and, and, and that sort of thing. You have come to um, a governmental agency, which is the Department of Labor. Mm -hmm. It is the centennial of the, the, the labor laws, uh, the government arm. And so therefore, in the interest of natural justice, you have come and presented a side. And at the end of the day, Stanley Franks made the point here that um, it, the, the Labor Department is not a trade union. It is for um, the industrial relations to ensure that there's industrial relations, harmony, and peace. Conflict is going to arise in the workplace. It is inevitable, um, human nature. 
um, the, the, the workers' rights against the profitability and a number of other things that generate some friction uh, within there. When a complainant comes to the Department of Labor, we have a duty to record. It is not nebulous and in the air. We have to take information. We have to write it down. We have to document it. And you have an agree a grievance against somebody. We have to now engage that person. It can be done over the phone that, um, you know, this is what has happened. We can invite the persons to come in. We can have a round table, just like what we, we are having. And some of the, but some of the issues, um, they, they can be quite um, thorny that um, demands um, in-depth investigation and discussion. And I would say to you, um, some of the most, the, the, the largest body of law um, anywhere is when it comes to the world of work and complaints handling and grievance and issues and that sort of thing. Mm. Um, the adjustment of it, how <coughs> contracts are made, what is happening with persons' rights and that sort of thing. And so it is important. Um, it, um, I don't want people to run away with the, the, the impression that um, the, the Labor Department is operating a backdoor operation against okay. them. A secret talk and, with you. Yes, yes, a secret talk yeah. and that sort of Just thing. so that I don't get any more complaints <laughs> about people holding on, on, on their phones. We got three calls. Um, so let's go ahead and take these calls. We'll take notes again, and we'll try to answer in the last 15 minutes. Good evening, caller. Welcome. Good evening, caller. Welcome to the round table. Good evening. Yes. Okay, um, we're not hearing you. In, we're not hearing you here. Good evening. Yes, go ahead. Now we can hear you. Yes, I have a problem. I'm very big concern. I've been trying over a year now from St. Kitts Biomedical. The day I've been fired, issue. the boss didn't explain to me why I was fired. He called me and another employee in the office concerning some um, supplies that been going missing all the time. I explained to him I didn't know anything about it. The lady who he met down at the inventory, she was the one she was supposed to deal with it about. I went to the labor department after I been fired the same day. And when I went, I tell him where the boss turned me away here and explained to me why. And he told me that I'm going to get a letter from him. Carla, can you, can, you, Hello? can you hold on one second? I don't yes. think that that's an issue that we can discuss on this program tonight or even get a resolution for because if this has been going on for over a year it probably is now a legal matter and my suggestion would be for you to take that up with um, someone in the legal profession because I'm not sure what type of satisfaction you're gonna get from us on the panel tonight we appreciate you listening though we appreciate you calling in and um, you know we can do do it offline all the best. Okay, I would like to get the number offline and uh, even come and see you personally. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> my, my producer is laughing. I don't know why, uh, but I, I certainly understand. Um, yes, you can. Um, yeah, because it's hurting. I'm hurting, and nobody seems to listen to me. Good. Because I went um, back to the labor department, uh -huh. and the labor commissioner, Mr. Um, Amarie told me that it's a legal matter. So I said, I will take it to the, the, the court. And um, I spoke to Lexi the other day, that is Mr. Nisbet, and he told me that the Labor Department called him and tell him that I say I am going to take them to court. That is wrong. So it's like the second said with the employers and not the employee. Okay, but I the don't like it. But I don't think that I don't think I'm um, telling the employer that you're going to court influences it one way or another. But as I said, this is a legal matter. You've already started the process, and we wish you all the best. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Um, we have another caller. Okay, go ahead, caller. Welcome into our special edition of the round table. Good night. Good night. Good night. Social security. Yes, sir. Um, and we think government barry all kind of money from social security. So when are you going to let us put the money in your thumb? Because I think you are when you work on more social security money as well, right? And to Mr. Frank, what are you going to do to clean up the union name? Because you know, people been branding the, the union to be that when the Labour Party is called, the union just will be effective. If you go to the labor union for public functional whatever, you get more tax because the union ain't got a team. Right? So what are you going to do to try to clean up the 
use the name. And how it is that the union is changing? They are so, you go to the union and you go, you read to the labor department over a case that to be found. And, to, and when you look, if you win the case, don't you suppose to get a report and you file to say, well, so that so, so time you had a case and how the case come out? It is a good or bad report. Because when you have a case, you should reflect on your job thing that why I had a case to win this and that. And I have to win. Uh, I lose the case or whatever. Not something like that and then you do it And to the Labor Department, to the Labor Commissioner again, what are the Labor Department plans are? Because a little here and there on the radio, a little 15 minutes with a little tidbit could be a big help for the workers. Okay. All right, Colin, Amen. thank you. Just just to remind you that there is um, a, a program that we have. It's called World of Work, and it's on um, Monday, and m Thursday. Monday and Thursday. Um, at what time is it? My producers are telling me. 8.30? 8.25. It's a five-minute program, and it d discuss. I mean, different topics um, are, discussing, uh, are discussed, I should say, during the show. And I'm sure everybody hears it because that's the number one morning show in St. Kitts. So everybody listens. Uh, we got any more callers? Okay, we got. Okay, so we're going to take the final, final. Whoever we have on the line, that's who we're going to take, and then we'll start wrapping up. Um, good evening, caller. Welcome to the round table. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <coughs> I find you who are this deal. Okay, well. Yes. Hello. Yes, go Yes, ahead. we're hearing you. Yeah, hello. Um, I just want to back up a little bit. Now, you guys spoke and speaking about um, exiting buildings in case of emergencies and the workplace and stuff like that, and how do you order in case of fire and all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but one thing I want to... I haven't heard you guys speak about is... Remember, if there's a person who's blind in this building, the brightest exit sign would be help them. <laughs> And the loudest of a loudspeaker wouldn't help somebody who, who can hear. Mm -hmm. So how do you then yes. address these things when it comes to people with various types of disabilities the in the workplace? Yeah. And also the, the Labor Department, I want to make one little criticism right me. You guys have been holding some workshops where you keep holding them in places that are inaccessible. Um, can you consider next time you're holding these workshops to have, have them in places that are more accessible so people like myself can attend these, these workshops? Uh, right, thank you very much for your contribution. I think that those are valid points. Um, we've had programs here um, before where we've, we've discussed people with um, who are differently able or uh, people with disabilities, um, as as we refer to, you mm -hmm. know, depending on what circumstance um, we're in. I think those are very critical um, components of what we're discussing tonight. And I mean, these are things that would actually, I mean, you know, guide us to the, um, guide us forward mm -hmm. as to, you know, labor relations and safety and health. So we decided that we don't have any more calls. Um, you know, every time we do a program, it seems as if we can do a part two and a part three because there's so much interest in, in, in the program. What we do is we encourage you to, of course, listen um, at 8.25, Monday and Thursday on GQ's morning show on the radio um, and the name of the program is World of Work where you know you get all sorts of information from um, the Labor Department. So we're gonna um, start um, wrapping up our um, conversation and let's start with the last caller because I think that that's a legitimate concern. I, I personally think it's a very a very strong point that is made. Mm -hmm. um, even getting into the bank, getting up the steps of the bank is a problem. I don't. I think this is only one bank I see have um, the, 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 the ramp up, and when you go on the ramp, the door is closed. The door of the ramp is closed. I'm not mentioning the name of the bank, but look around town and say, <laughs> where the ramp is, that door is closed, fixed closed. 
So you have to go and go up these steps to get inside. I believe that we need to pay more attention to um, facilitating people who are um, challenged. physically challenged. Challenge. 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 Physical, physically yeah. challenged. Mm -hmm. um, somebody might not have a good eyesight and so on. You need to have a special light, a special light for the physically challenged. Mm -hmm. Not just the elderly, physically challenged. When no, no one is there who is physically challenged, the others can use it. Yeah. But that must be a designated line for the physically challenged. And, and I think, I'm going to just butt in one second here. I think that's so critical. Because people think that these lines are reserved for, hey, older people or whatever it is. It might be somebody young who has a broken leg or Seriously. whatever the case is. Yeah. I mean, they ought to be accorded the same courtesies yeah. as anybody, whether they're old, young, or in between. Go ahead, I'm sorry. You know, yeah, the, 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 along the same point, Stanley, if you, if you go ahead, go ahead. I, I find that, generally speaking, we, we are not a society which has had sympathy with people who are not as robust as a normal person, so to speak. So that, that is why I believe in a lot of places you do not have facilities to accommodate these people who are challenged. And I think this is the next step that we have to go to yes, yes. as far as our yes. development yes. is yes. concerned. Yes. Yeah. With respect to the recognition that all of us have our differences in whatever yeah, 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 aspect. Yeah, yeah. And we must create the facilities within our environs to accommodate every those si people. Every citizen. Every, ci every, every, citizen. every citizen. I think it's a very important yes, point. Very and it's a way I don't know how Social Security can help in this, yeah. or the Labor Department can help mm. in this. But that's the next step we need to go to. In terms of Social Security, we have been improving our access in terms of persons who are differently abled, so that in our new environment we have uh, a wheelchair ramp that allows persons to get into our building without having to come up steps. And if they need to be referred to someone in an office which is on another floor, we have taken the, the initiative to have an elevator in place that persons can use the elevator mm -hmm. and then they can wheel their wheelchair anywhere else they want to go. And um, different things like that. But, but it's a very, very important point and it has to have more universal traction across St. Kitts and Nevis that yeah. more and more entities, more and more enterprises, more and more employers, more and more places where people come to do business, business yeah. and more and more places where people work, work. because even yeah. the workers. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh -huh. If I, if you have a worker who is not able to walk up steps, then how do you accommodate him? How do you accommodate him? How do you accommodate so him? every yeah. workplace uh -huh. should, 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 mm -hmm. should make whatever effort it can. I know it would be costly to some persons, but mm -hmm. If you have the political will and if you have the the moral will, you will make the effort. Um, the, uh, at the end of the um, thank you, Cecil. I am. I just want to underscore it because um, as we look at the evolution of the socio-economic construct <coughs> of um, Sinkits and Nevis, and um, Lincoln made the point: this is the next way to uh, we we going forward. Mm -hmm. This aspect of it, the whole aspect of disability and uh, um, people who are differently abled, accessibility um, and that sort of thing has to be put place uh, to the fore. And as, as I said, multi-sectorial um, 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 interventions um, must be made <coughs> to um, the thing. And I, um, and I dare say I, I am prayerful, you know, that um, all the, the stakeholders in the world of work um, would, would, would uh, uh, appreciate um, the, 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 the value, the, 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 the value of, um, with that, that um, contribution that was made um, with respect to it and um, begin to move accordingly with respect to that. Clement, as the yes. time is winding down, I, want, yes. I would like to end by saying that the Chamber of Industry of Commerce and the Manufacturing Division, we take the matter of um, occupational safety and health very, very seriously. Um, in fact, it is identified as one of the top priority areas in the national manufacturing strategy. Okay. Um, so we take it very seriously. And I want, to, I want to end tonight by reading two more of the policy items on our health and safety, mm -hmm. which I, I think most responsible employers would have. And it comes back to the point that I've been making whole night. Um, this is number six. 
to provide adequate information, instruction, training, and supervision to ensure that employees work safely and efficiently. Mm -hmm. And the last one, number eight, to develop safety awareness and to encourage and promote full and effective um, joint consultation to continuously improve health, safety, and fire control measures in the workplace. Mm -hmm. And I end by saying that based on the theme that has been adopted, um, a culture of prevention will only come with a new culture of awareness. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Mr. Yeah, Franks? and again, uh, you know, I just want to say this. I think it is fundamental in terms of my approach to tonight. A union is as strong as its membership. The union is not the building or just the officers there. If the officers have a strong membership, they, they'll be certain they'll be paid. <laughs> You'll get a better type of worker to work for you. But if you have a weak membership, then you're going to have difficulty getting good leader, leader, leaders. So that, don't fall the union. The worker must fall himself. Him or herself. Him or herself, mm -hmm. as far as I said there. Because they are the union. The workers and the union. They must get themselves together and choose a democratic organization. You choose your leaders. It's not a lawyer's office just walk into. You choose your leaders. And it is important that if you choose your leaders and you have a strong, vibrant trade union, then all of these issues that affords social justice will be looked after. All right, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Franks. And over to you, Mr. Hamilton, social yes. security. Safety perspective. and health. Safety and health um, is really the responsibility of all of the stakeholders. Everyone has, it's a shared responsibility there's no one sector or one stakeholder that has more responsibility than the other. It's a shared responsibility. Everyone must take ownership of that responsibility. Where Social Security is concerned, Social Security has been pleased to be partnering with the Labor Department and the other stakeholders over the period way back since even the inception of the World Day for Safety and Health at Work in 2003. Um, we've had symposiums etc and panel discussions on, uh, and what have you and so in that regard I would like to really commend the Labor Department for this exercise that we're having tonight even as it is being done on World Day for Safety and Health at Work 2015 to to help to to create that awareness that we spoke about earlier on and to help to sensitize people about this shared responsibility um, I want to also make one last point that Social Security's International Umbrella Organization, the International Social Security Association, also takes a similar position with respect to its partnership with the International Labor Organization. And we have piggybacked, if you will, on that at the local level. And we have been pleased, as I said, to be joining with the Labor Department and the other stakeholders. And so I just want to encourage each and every one to, to take note, take cognizance of the importance of safety and health in the workplace. Put whatever plans in place you have to put in place within your workplaces as employees, employers, and all concerned, and help us join us in building a culture of prevention on occupational safety and health. Thank you very much. Um, and now to the star of the show. <laughs> um, thank you, um, Clement. Um, the, the sentiments that have been aired here by the, the panelists and um, through some of the <coughs> callers here um, underscores the need for a whole ch a change platform um, with respect to the um, issue of occupational health and safety. We are aware of it. We, 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 we know of it. But the attitudes and behaviors towards it and how to construct it, that change platform, is going to be critical. Um, throughout the evening, we, were, we would have heard that um, it is so critical to have responsible um, employers and empl uh, um, employees in a shared responsibility to ensure that where they work is healthy and it is safe. It is a human right. Um, it is part of decent work, decent work and safe work. 
um, 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 for for not only you know federation, um, but for the the the, the world of work. Um, Underscored tonight was the need for um, education, the integration of occupational safety and health within the education um, culture of St. Kitts and, and, and Nevis. Not just for those who work, but certainly in the homes, as um, Mr. Um, Lincoln would have made the, the point here, but um, cascading and permit, um, um, permitting throughout the whole of this, this society. It is a shared responsibility. We need cooperation. We need the partnership. Um, tripartism is the way to go, a collective responsibility mm -hmm. to ensure that at the end of the day, um, our socioeconomic um, and construct and development, um, those foreign workers who, and, and businesses that we attract um, to sink it's and Nevis, um, they come in, into an environment with the higher standards of um, 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 uh, um, industrial and labor practices um, uh, are the norm in our society. I would want to, in closing, to again, um, for all employers, they have a responsibility to report to the Department of Labor um, any incidences of um, occupational issues, um, um, accidents on, on, on the job. Um, likewise with the Social Security Board to get the information to the Department of Labor so that the, the, the Labor Department can react in real time um, with respect to some of these the issues that are here, but certainly the Labor Department, as indicated by um, Lincoln here, has to um, adopt a more robust attitude um, towards the issue of inspection. And that is something that I would uh, assure um, the Federation that that would be undertaken. All right, thank you very much, and thanks to all the folks who joined us tonight, whether they joined us um, by radio, TV, or um, okay. internet. The buzzword tonight, awareness. And awareness would, can come in the form of safety drills, mm -hmm. inspections, and meetings. Mm -hmm. Of course, employers also need to provide proper PPE for um, the, their workers. So we had a great discussion tonight, and we'll encourage you to join us again. We take a break next week, of course, because it's the Labor Day holiday um, on Monday the 4th. On the 11th, though, we come back with another round table, and we're going to discuss another very interesting topic, um, cybercrime, um, <laughs> which um, I think a lot of people are going to be surprised as to you know what we're getting in. And just one other thing I want to say, just for the folks who are um, using Samsung and has access to the Play Store, ZIZ's app, um, it's brand new, just, just came out, is available in the Play Store. All you have to do is to um, search using ZIZ News and you'll be able to watch TV, um, listen to us um, on demand, um, get updates on a regular basis. Um, so that you can, you know, follow us as the nation station, 54 years old and growing. Um, once again, I want to thank you for being a part of the roundtable. Have a great evening. We'll see you in two weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir.